Okay, so I want to start by briefly reviewing what we talked about last week. So last week, um, we talked about ways of describing an object's motion in terms of the sign of its velocity and the sign of, it and the sign of its acceleration. So we looked at several examples. So for instance, uh, let me share my screen here. Okay. Guys, for this example right here, can someone tell me uh, what is the sign of the velocity and the sign of the acceleration for this particular motion map? Negative positive? Um, no, it is not negative positive. Anyone else? Negative negative. Negative negative, exactly. Uh, uh, it's a negative velocity because it's moving in the negative direction. But how did you know it was a negative acceleration, Courtney? Because the signs have to be the same for it to be speeding up. Bingo. Exactly. Did y'all catch that? If it's speeding up, the signs have to be the same. The same. The signs have to match. Um, that's very, very important that you guys remember that. If you're slowing down, the signs are going to be different. If you're speeding up, the signs have to match. That's a general rule that I need for you guys to remember. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to find this link here so I can... Now, what about this one right here? Okay, let me just do a Okay. What is the sign of the velocity and the sign of the acceleration here? Positive negative. Positive negative, exactly. It's a positive velocity because it's moving toward the right. It's moving in the positive direction. And you know it's a negative acceleration because this object here, this car, is slowing down. So if it's slowing down, that means the sign of the velocity and the sign of the acceleration will be different from one another. Okay. And last example I'm going to do. Okay, so the last example I'm going to do is this one right here. So describe that velocity and that acceleration there for me. Negative velocity and zero acceleration. Yep, negative velocity and zero acceleration. It is not accelerating because it's moving at a constant velocity. Anytime an object's moving at a constant velocity, there is no acceleration. Okay, so it seems like you guys got these motion maps down. Um, so since you guys got these motion maps down, we're ready to move on um, um, basically to our next major topic um, within the kinematics units, and that is graphing. So everyone in physics needs to understand how to represent motion correctly on a graph. Specifically today, we're going to start off with position time graphs, and then we're going to move on to velocity time graphs, and then eventually we're going to um, move on to acceleration time graphs. Um, I just put the link to the chat, but I just put the link to the attendance in the chat. Oh, I see. Um, um, Anthony just did it as well. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Okay, so now. Um, let me ask you guys a question. Did you all um, um, get the message that I posted in Schoology last night? Did you guys get that this morning about um, possibly printing out those worksheets? Did anyone get that message? Anyone? Yes. Okay. So uh, hopefully you guys were able to get a hold of those worksheets and hopefully you guys were able to print those out. Uh, because we're going to be filling those in today. Now, it's not required that um, um, you print those out, but it's idea that you want to have those printed out um, so that you can fill them in as fill them in as we go. Um, if you don't have them printed out, please pull out a blank sheet of paper or a spiral notebook or something um, 
something along those lines so that you can write out what we're going through today so that you will have the answer, answers available to you all. Now, let me open back up my Schoology page. Okay. So, okay. if you guys log into Schoology, you guys should see these four PDF files. There's a formula chart, and there's also three assignments that I pulled from the AP workbook. We're going to get started working on these three assignments together as a class. Now, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to tell you guys where these assignments come from. Now, if you guys remember, one of the things that I said about three weeks ago, um, I stated to you guys that I am not looking to reinvent the wheel here, since you know this is a new way of doing things. We're teaching virtually. I am going to basically use every resource given to me by the college board. Um, I'm not, you know, coming up with anything new. I'm going to follow strictly, you know, you know, everything that's out there that the college board has available to teachers. And one of the things that they have available is this AP Physics Workbook, which I am about to pull up for you guys right now. So about a year ago, the college board, basically, you know, these are the people who make the AP exam. They developed this teacher workbook um, for AP Physics 1. And the reason why they developed this is because um, prior to this time, a lot of physics teachers from all over the country were complaining that the AP exam is very, very difficult. And they felt they didn't have enough resources to, um, to, to be able to prepare the students properly for their tests. So the college board responded with this workbook. And as you can see, it's, it's a pretty detailed workbook. It's 358 pages, you know, and then there's topics in the workbook. Uh, well, there's, there's activities in the workbook covering every major topic in this course. So what I want to do, I want to go over um, several of these assignments with you guys during class time, okay? Um, and obviously, this is important because, again, like I said, the, the you know you know these are the people who make the exam. So by going through this workbook, we are getting an understanding of how it is that the people at the college board want you to answer certain questions. Uh, because remember that the AP exam is both multiple choice and free response. So we are still in the first unit, in kinematics, which basically just deals with mathematical motion. So those are the three assignments that we're going to work on today. Okay. And again, hopefully you guys have some sort of some sort of sheet of paper next to you, um, or you have the PDF files, um, because um, I need for you guys to be writing along with me. Now, um, just so you guys know, um, I will not be posting the answer key to the to these assignments online. I will not be posting them in Schoology, and I can't do that because the College Board does not want me to post the, the teacher key to their workbook publicly, and I understand why they want me to do that. So normally in the past, whenever I would post you know, some sort of assignment, I would give you guys the key to go along with it. I will not do this for any assignments. Well, I will not do that for any assignments that come from this workbook because the College Board will not allow me to do it. So that's why it is very, very important that you guys are working along with me while we are working on this assignment. Okay, so be sure that you have a sheet of paper next to you um, if you don't have the workbook printed out or if you don't have these pages printed out. Um, and also in the coming weeks, I'm going to be telling you guys what to turn in. We're not going to be turning in every, every assignment that we do from the workbook, but some of the assignments you guys will have to turn in. Basically, um, I want to um, tell you um, which, to which to take a picture of and to turn in as proof to me that you did it. Um, so be sure that you have some sort of folder or some sort of binder to keep these pages in as we go throughout them, as we go through, as we go through them throughout the course, throughout this course. All right. So. You know what, let me open this in Kami. Oh, crap. Got 
podcast. Give me just a second. Let me. It 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 saved the answers for the last question. I'm sorry. Which one is the one we're supposed to print out? So um, in Schoology, there are four PDF files that I wanted you guys to print out because we're going to be working on those throughout the next few days. Do you see them in school in your Schoology page for this week? Um, do they say the difference between? Oh no, that's a video. Um. So look in the week of September 28th to October 2nd, and then click on the Tuesday folder, and you should see them. It should be. Oh, I found it. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay, let me go back to this. Sorry, guys, I had to clear the page first before we can get started. Um, and again, this um, 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 these assignments are made by the College Board. So this is, you know, um, this is official activities we're doing here. The people who make the exam are responsible for making these activities. Okay, so. Um, so reading the scenario here, it says Angela is running at three meters per second toward the bus, um, which is 15 meters away. Below is a table of Angela's position at each second. Complete the table, then on the diagram of Angela, and the, then on the diagram of Angela in the bus, create a motion map of Angela's position at, at, at each second. Do this by marking with the dot where Angela is at every second. Okay, so you guys are already familiar with motion maps. Motion maps are something that that we've already talked about. So before we can do the motion map, let us finish filling out the table. Okay, someone tell me if Angela is running at three meters per second. Okay, um, um, then that means after one second she's at a position of three meters. After two seconds, she's at a position of six meters. Someone tell me, what is her position after three seconds? Again, we're just filling this in. Yep, someone in the chat said nine meters. Um, what, what is her position after four meters? Twelve. Yep. And then lastly, five meters. I mean, I'm sorry, five seconds. Yep, 15. Okay, so you guys got it. So that's really easy. Uh, doing the motion map, so completing the motion map is also really easy. Because again, we've already talked about how to do this. So remember, at zero seconds, she's at position zero. So this is her position at, um, at zero seconds. So zero meters, one, two, three meters. So after one second, she's at three meters. Okay. And then after two seconds, she's at six meters. So three, four, five, six. Okay. And then after, um, so zero seconds, one second, two seconds, then at, um, at three seconds, she's at nine meters. So this is, um, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then after four seconds, she's at 12 meters, so 10, 11, 12. Okay. And then lastly, after five seconds, she's at 15 meters, um, 12, 13, 14, 15. And remember, 15 meters is how far away the bus is. Okay, so if, as you guys notice, when we created our motion map, the dots are evenly spaced. So we've already talked about that. If the dots are evenly spaced, we know that represents an object moving at a constant velocity. Whenever you create a motion map and the dots are not evenly spaced, the object is accelerating. Now, now that we have our motion map and now that we have our table, um, what we need to do here, it says we need to represent Angela's motion by creating a position versus time graph. Um, so finish filling out the data table above and then mark Angela's position at every second on the graph. 
Plot the data points with solid field lines. Sketch a best fit line through the data points by drawing a single continuous straight line through the points. Okay, so guys, let us get ready to do our graph here. Let me make this bigger so y'all can see this. Okay, so for a position time graph, remember position always goes along the y-axis and then time always goes along the x-axis. So just filling this in, this is how our position time graph will look like. Okay, so at time t equals zero, um, um, and just at position zero. Okay, at time one second, she's at a position of three meters. So if guys, if you go over here to one second, and you gotta go up three meters, one, two, three. So this is three meters here. Okay, at two seconds, she's at six meters, one, two seconds. And then we gotta go up to six meters, which is this point right here. So at two seconds, she's at six meters. Okay, at three seconds, she's at nine meters. So this is three seconds and go up to nine. Again, we're just graphing these points. At four seconds, she's at 12 meters. So you go up to 12, which is here. So four seconds is at 12 meters, which is here. And then lastly, at five seconds, Angela's at a position of 15 meters. Okay. So um, now that we have our data points, uh, the instructions tells us to draw a best fit line through the data. So that best fit line is going to look something like this. Let me So the best fit line is going to look something like this. Okay. So and your best fit line has to touch the data points as much as possible. Okay, now, guys, so we have just completed our first position versus time graph in this course. And I want you guys to notice something here. This line is, for the most part, pretty much a, you know, a, a, a smooth, straight line. Guys, as a general rule in this course, Anytime an object is moving at a constant velocity, when you plot its motion on a position time graph, um, um, it will always, always resemble a straight line. Again, for something that's moving at a constant velocity, you're going to see a, a you're going to see a straight line. Now, in the coming days, when we get to acceleration, um, acceleration on a position time graph, the lines won't be straight. Um, um, the line will be a curved line. So, for example, something that's accelerating may look something like this. Oh, hold on. Okay. Something that's accelerating uh, may look something like this. Okay. So, for an acceleration on a position time graph, that's a curved line. But if it's a constant velocity, um, the object is going to have a straight line on a position time graph. So, that's just something very important that you guys need to know. Okay. Now, um, uh, now that we've sketched our position time graph, we need to take the slope of this line. Okay. Now I want to say something here um, real quickly. Um, um, when it says, hold on. I just realized I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't even read part C yet, <laughs> which is what we're about to do now. Okay. So part C says, Calculate the slope of the line you drew in part B by choosing two points on the line and filling in the equation below. Choose two points on the line um, that will be used to calculate the slope. Circle these two places on the line. Remember, do not use data points from the table. Okay, guys, so I, I want to say something here that's pretty important. The college board, guys, um, wants you guys to understand that whenever you are taking the slope of a best fit line, um, they do not want you to choose points from a data table. Um, um, so any of these points on the data table, they don't want you to use to find your slope. Rather, they want you to pick any points um, that touch the line that aren't necessarily taken from the data table. And guys, um, in just a moment, I'm going to tell why that is. Just for now, just pay attention to what I'm doing. 
So I'm, I'm going to tell why that is in just a moment. Um, so before we calculate the slope, you guys should remember this. From algebra, what is the definition of slope? Y'all know this. Slope is just equal to what? Rise over run. Yeah, rise over run. Or in other words, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So in other words, guys, we need to, we, we need to pick two points that touch our best fit line. And again, our best fit line is the line that goes through all the data points. So, uh, guys, whenever you're finding the slope of a best fit line, um, it is your choice to choose any two points you want. Again, you can choose any two points you want um, apart from the data points from the table. Um, choose, any, um, choose any other two points to find the slope. Um, so I'm going to choose the points that they, uh, that they chose from their key. Um, well, they chose in their key. So they chose points. Let me see. Um, they chose this point right here at four meters. And then they chose this point right here. Um, at 13 meters. Here's. So this is 15, 14, 13 meters. Wait a minute. Thing. So in order to find the slope here, I am going to label this. I am going to label this point one, and I'm going to label this point two. Okay. Now let us read off our x values and our y values. Okay. The x value for point one is. Okay. So if you notice, this point is somewhere between one and two seconds. So if this is 1.5 here, that means this point here is somewhere around 1.3. So just kind of estimating, kind of eyeballing that. So my x value is 1.3. And my y value is um, is four four meters. Okay. Now let us figure out the x value and the y value here. So it, so here we have um, this our second point, which is somewhere between four and five. So this this midpoint here is four point um, um, four point five seconds, which means this point here is somewhere is somewhere around four point three. Okay, and what is our y value here? So here's our y value. Our y value is right at 13, which is here. Okay, so now that we have our two points, we are now ready to plug in. We are now ready, ready to plug into this equation here to find the slope, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay. Okay. And so, guys, just plug in those values. Um, notice we're plotting meters on the y-axis, so that's why we have um, that's why we have meters there for our units. So, um, so y two. Remember from above, the the second y value was thirteen. Yeah. From above, the first y value was four. Right. So, and you guys should be able to see that here, right? So, um, so y2, which is 13, minus y1, which is 4. So now let us do x2 minus x1, okay? So x2, x2 is 4.3. And then y2 is 1.3. Okay. And of course, our units on the x-axis is seconds. That's why they put s there to represent our units. Okay. So, 
So to calculate this slope is really easy. In fact, you, you guys don't even need a calculator to do this. 13 minus 4 is 9. And 4.3 minus 1.3 is 3. So obviously, guys, what is the value of our slope? 9 divided by 3 is what? Just yeah, 3. And to be specific, guys, our units for our slope here are meters per second. So I'm going to write that down. So meters per second are our units. Okay. Huh. So with that said, guys, um, since we found the slope of our position time graph, what does that tell you? The slope of a position time graph always represents the object's what? What do y'all think? Speed. Speed, or in other words, velocity. Okay, there's something very important that you guys need to remember in this course. Anytime I give you a position time graph and I ask you to find the slope of that graph, the slope of the line of that graph always represents the object's velocity. Okay. And if you notice, if you notice, um, three meters per second, the value that we got from our slope, that was exactly equal to the value, the velocity that we're told Angela was running at. Okay. Now, by the way, any questions so far? Before I move on. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, well, Mr. Taylor, why is it that whenever you found your slope, why didn't you just take data from your table? You still would have gotten the same thing. You would have still gotten three meters per second for your velocity. And yes, that is true. Um, I still would have given me the same thing. And notice why that is, is because notice this, the data from this table gave me a, a, a relatively smooth line. The data was pretty smooth. It was pretty consistent. However, in the real world, guys, that would not always be the case. In fact, if I had you guys in the classroom right about now, we would be doing a lab where we would be taking race cars and we will be plotting out the data, the position of the race car over time. And whenever we, would, whenever we do those labs in the course, when we take the data, and we put it in the, in, the, in the table form, and then we graph it out, it doesn't always give us this nice, smooth function. So for that reason, um, the people of the College Board do not want you to pull um, um, points from your data to take the slope of your line, because again, your data will not always be perfect. In fact, that's the purpose of drawing a best fit line, so in the real world, guys, if you take, and, and let me just give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. In the real world, if you collect data, in the real world, if you collect data, you may get dots all over the place. You may get a dot here, 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 a dot here. You may get dots all over the place. Um, the purpose of a best fit line is to draw the straightest line possible through the middle of all those points. And you would take the slope of the line, not necessarily um, looking at the data points. So that's the purpose of a best fit line. So that's why the College Board do doesn't want you to pull points from your table whenever you're finding the slope, is because you're not going to always get a nice, smooth, continuous function like we got here whenever you collect data in the real world. And so, and of course, physics is about measuring data in the real world. So just keep that in mind, guys, in the future. Um, and of course, um, hopefully, if we do decide to come back to campus, we can actually do real world labs where you guys will see what actual data looks like. And then you will draw a best fit line through that data. So even though um, even though your your data may not be perfect, the purpose of the best fit line is to basically to smooth out uh, um, error in the data. Um, in order to give you a nice slope. Because even though, like for example, uh, um, these data points that I drew here, even though the data is not perfect, it still is a trend that you can notice and that is sloping upward. So I just want to throw that out there uh, in case anybody was wondering why is it that I didn't take data from my points to find the slope. Because oftentimes in the real world, when we when we deal with actual data, we don't get 
um, this smooth function. Okay. So let's go back to finishing this um, finish this table. I'm sorry, we're finishing, you know, filling out these blanks. Okay, now, okay, use the equation for a line y equals mx plus b to write an equation including units for the position versus time graph above. Remember that m is the slope and b is the vertical intercept. Um, so whenever you guys are writing your equation. Um, um, they want you to use standard physics symbols. Okay, well, what are the standard physics symbols that you guys have to use? And this is important. Let me show you guys something here. Okay, Guys, if you go into Schoology, I've uploaded um, in the folder for today a formula chart. If you click on that formula chart and you scroll to the second page here, okay, you're going to see a list of every of every important formula in AP Physics. By the way, this is the formula chart that is given to you all on the AP exam. Um, this formula, this chart is given to you all, and this is every major formula in physics that you guys need to know. Um, and the reason why I pull up this formula chart is because off to the side here. They include, they include the symbols for these various terms. And I want you guys to notice something here. Mm -hmm. If you look at your formula chart, so, and again, this was made by the college board. Guys, what is the standard symbol that we use to represent position? X. Yeah, we use this little x. Okay. And obviously the standard um, symbol that we use to represent time is little t. Whenever we're representing period, we use big T, but again, that's for later on in the course. Whenever we're representing time, we use little t. And whenever we represent position, we use little x. And here's why I showed you guys that, because let's go, let's go back to our worksheet here. Um, so we were plotting position along the y-axis, and we were plotting time along the x-axis. So that means whenever we're writing our equation, we need to use our standard physics symbols. Okay. So, now in math class, everybody in here knows the standard equation for a line, and that's y equals mx plus b. So, this is the math form of this equation. We want to take this equation and, re, um, um, and rewrite it in terms of its physics form, okay? So, what were we plotting along the y-axis? We just said that along the y-axis, we were plotting position, okay? And what did we just say was our position? Uh, what, what, what did we just say was our standard symbol for position? It's x. So, so instead of using y here, I'm going to use x because that's what we use. So here, this is x. Oh, I said x is bigger than what I wanted. <laughs> Okay, so we use x. We use x um, to represent what's being plotted along the y-axis, in this case, which is position. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. So right here, m, m means our slope. So in this case, what was our slope? We just calculated it where our slope was 3 meters per second. Okay, so whenever you write your slope, Okay, I always write your units next to it. So meters, three meters per second. Okay. Now y equals mx plus b. Okay. Along the x-axis, guys, what did we say we were plotting along the x-axis from that table from that graph above? We were plotting what now? Time. Time. So that means we need to use little t here. Okay. So y equals mx plus b, and what is b? b represents our vertical intercept. In other words, it's our y-intercept. 
and if you guys notice, for this particular graph, the y-intercept is just zero. Because remember, the y-intercept is wherever the line crosses the y-axis. So here, for this particular equation, the y-intercept is just zero. Okay. Of course, we're going to see more equations in the future where um, we're going to have different y-intercepts. But here, the y-intercept is zero. Guys, there's one more thing I forgot to do. I forgot to put, I for, I forgot to put my uh, my units on time. So let me go ahead and do that now. Because we're talking about time, we are dealing with seconds. Okay. So hopefully everybody understands what I did so far. All I did was I just took. I took the math. Um, oh, what's that I'm doing? Okay, there we go. So I took the um, equation of a line in math, which is y. So for math, you guys see it like this, y equals mx plus b. So I just took this equation right here, and I wrote it in its physics form for this particular graph. In this case, um, x equals 3t plus 0. So x is what's being plotted on the y-axis, which is position. Uh, um, our slope here is 3. Um, on our x-axis, we're plotting time. And then 0 is our y-intercept. OK. Any questions so far? Okay, the last thing that I want to do on this worksheet here is, is write a more general equation for Angela's motion using standard physics symbols. So when they say write a general equation, basically, you know, uh, they want us to write this. So remember, x is our position. And 3 is our velocity, but, um, um, but um, that's a specific velocity. We just want to put a v to represent the general velocity. Okay. And t is time. So in other words, if you want to know, if you want to know an object's displacement is just equal to velocity multiplied by time. Okay. Does everybody have that filled out? Any questions on that? Okay, so let's keep going. At least want to get started on the second worksheet. Any questions on this? Because I'm uh, I'm getting ready to clear this page so that it, you know it'll be clear for the next class. All right, so hopefully everybody understood what we went through so far. Okay, now I want to get you guys started on the second worksheet that I have posted in Schoology. And again, all of these worksheets are taken from they're taken from the 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 workbook designed by the College Board. Okay. Now, this is an interesting one right here. Uh, now, for this scenario, guys, we have two people running towards each other. So in other words, they are running in opposite directions. So the question is, how would that look like on a position versus time graph? So let's go ahead and read through this. So Angela and Blake are running toward each other from 15 meters away. At time t equals zero, Angela runs to the right at five meters per second, and Blake runs to the left at three meters per second. OK, so. So, guys, let us just fill out the table here. That's the first thing we need to do. OK, so uh, we already know Angela's position and Angela's right here at zero meters. So, so we're going to call her 
her position uh, zero. So Angela is at zero meters. So Angela's at zero meters. Okay. Someone tell me if Angela is moving at five meters per second, um, where will be her position after one meter? That's obvious. It's going to be at five. Yeah. All right. Someone tell me what is her position after two meters? I'm sorry, after two seconds, excuse me. What is her position after two seconds? 10. Yeah, 10 meters. And her position after three seconds is obviously... 15. 15, exactly. Okay. Now, notice Blake. Blake, at time zero, he is not at position zero. In fact, we know that he's 15, minutes, 15 meters away from Angela. So therefore, at time zero, his starting point is 15 meters. But guys, look at Blake's speed. He's running toward the left, and his speed is different from Angela, from Angela's speed. He's moving at three meters per second in this direction. So someone tell me, if he's moving at three meters per second, where would his position be after one second? 12. Yep. His position after two seconds? Nine. And lastly, his position after three seconds? Six. Yep, six meters. All right. So now, okay, I want you guys to notice something here. Uh, when we plot out both... When we plot out these, um, when we plot out this data here in this table, I want you guys to notice some trends. I want you guys to notice the difference in both their lines. Okay, so I'm kind of just, let me zoom in here so we can see this. I'm going to use I'm going to use a I'm going to use blue a blue line for Angela. Okay, so um at so at time 0, Angela is at a position of 15 meters. Okay. At um 1 second um, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. That's wrong. I'm thinking, uh, I'm saying Angela, but in my mind, I'm thinking Blake. <laughs> okay. um, so Angela, um, Angela is at, there you go. Angela is at um, position zero at zero seconds. And then at one second, she's at, a position of five meters and then at two seconds she's at a position of 10 meters and then at three seconds she is at a position of 15 meters okay so that's Angela now okay. let us do our best fit line so the best fit line should look something like this so remember, the best fit line is the line that goes through all the data points as much as possible. So that's Angela's data. Now, let us look at Blake. Okay. So Blake, um, and again, I'm using a different color for Blake. You know what? Let me use let me use blue for Blake. 
Okay, so blank is at um so at time t equals zero, blank is at fifteen meters. At time one second, blank is at twelve meters. Okay, at time two seconds, blank is at nine meters. And at time three seconds, Blake is at six meters, which is here. Okay. So how does his best fit? How does his best fit line look like? Blake's best fit line looks something like this. Okay. So I want you guys to notice something. You know what? I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change the colors here. Therefore, the colors match the data. So, like it's 15, 12, 9, and 6. Okay, so guys, um, we have both Angela's and Blake's data represented here. Okay. So with that said, okay. What do you guys notice? What is what do you guys notice? What is different about their slopes? So if you guys notice, um, Angela's was moving toward the right. So her slope was positive, but Blake was moving toward the left, so his slope was negative. That's another important thing you guys need to know from a position time graph. For objects moving, um, um, for objects moving in the positive direction, the slope is going to appear to go uphill. For objects moving in the negative direction, the slope is going to appear to go downhill. Okay, so that's another. Um, that's one important thing you guys need to know about position time graphs. Another important thing you guys need to know is that if you notice, Angela is moving faster than Blake. And so therefore, we see that her slope is actually steeper than Blake's slope. So the faster an object moves, the steeper a slope is going to be on a position versus time graph. So that's another thing you guys need to notice. Um, um, I think I'm going to stop here. We're going to pick this up next time. Um, guys, for your assignment for today, um, as far as um, what you have to do for homework, okay, in Schoology, and again, I'm just going to briefly talk about the assignment before I let you guys know, before I let you guys go. Um, in Schoology, there will be an air puzzle video for you guys to watch over position time graphs. Excuse me. And there will be questions embedded in the video. So um, later on today, you guys, please watch the watch that Ed Puzzle video and ask the questions. It's about eight minutes long. Um, it's not that long of a, of a video. So um, you guys should be able to complete that um, by midnight tonight. Um, are there any questions for me before I let you guys go? Any questions? All right, everyone, if there are no questions, you guys are free to go. I will see you all on Thursday. Bye, Mr. Jalen. Bye, Lillian. Have a good Bye. one. Bye, guys. What's the remind code? The rem I'm sorry? What's the remind? Remind code? You mean Ed Puzzle code? I don't have remind. Oh, they had remind. No, I don't have a remind. No, I just let... Um, I just sent updates in Schoology whenever I want to send you guys a message. Okay. Yeah. Bye, guys. Have a good one.